All right, so in the last video, what we did is we, we did a, a quick analysis of cholesterol structure. And we basically dice, dived into how it ultimately um, stabilizes the, mem the cell membranes and also the organelle membranes, because it also applies there to membrane-bound organelles like lysosomes and so forth, okay? So we looked at this. And if you want a, an explanation of this more, go back to the last video, and that's where we have it. Now we're actually going to specifically look at the molecular structure and see kind of how it fits in. And, and notice that there's a lot of this stuff isn't drawn to scale, but, but I think it'll give you the idea. So what I've done in white, key here is in white, this is a phospholipid. Specifically, this one is a phosphatidylcholine. Um, this applies to any of them, okay? What I want you to notice here is, specifically, this is position one and two. And we know on phospholipids, on positions one and two, we have these ester linkages to the fatty acids, okay? These little zigzag lines, recall from previous videos, those are the fatty acid tails that we refer to, okay? On position three, though, we have a phosphate. Okay, and at physiological pH, where you find these in the membrane, these phosphates are deprotonated at this position right here. And as a result of that, it has a negative charge. Okay, now, in red, the key is in red, I've drawn cholesterol sort of how it would fit into uh, an area where you have these phospholipid tails, okay? And if you remember what I said in the last video, and I'll go ahead and say it again because these are important things. I said, and this is the point here, the hydrophobic steroid skeleton, which is all of this business over here, essentially all this because it's all carbon and hydrogen, very hydrophobic, that hydrophobic skeleton of cholesterol has van der Waals attraction to the phospholipid acyl tails. So those tails, these zigzags, have essentially the same type of nonpolarity that the steroid nucleus has, or the cholesterol nucleus. They're both hydrophobic, and so they're going to have van der Waals attractions. And that's going to tend to stabilize these tails in their position. But the main thing I want you to notice is that this phosphate has this negative charge right here. Well, remember I also said in the last video, and I'll say it once again, that the A-ring, this is the A-ring of cholesterol, the A-ring hydroxyl hydrogen bonds to, hydrogen bonds that is, to the phosphate of the phospholipid polar head. So the polar head is really and truly occupied by all this. When every, anyone says the polar head, that's actually what they're referring to. And then if you kind of think of the tails like this, that's what they're saying, okay? It's in a little bit of different conformation than you normally see it, but that's what it is. So on that head, we have this phosphate. It has a negative charge. We said that cholesterol, right, the hydrogen on this OH group on the A-ring has a partial positive. Hmm, I have a positive charge there, a negatively charged phosphate. Those are going to tend to want to attract each other. And in fact, if you also consider the fact that there's van der Waals attractions in this region, and now you have a hydrogen bond between cholesterol and the polar head, that greatly adds to the stability of the membrane in regions where you have lots of cholesterol. Okay, so I said it in the last video, and I'll just say it again, just very briefly, but remember, when you the more cholesterol you have in the membrane, the more stable the membrane is. So in other words, cholesterol increases the stability of the membrane. And because there's all these attractive forces that are kind of holding the tails in place, you drastically decrease membrane entropy, and as a result, that increases the membrane's rigidity. Okay. Now, just in case this molecular diagram doesn't make a lot of sense to you, I have another picture right here that might make a little more sense, okay? So this is the sort of classical drawing that you saw in some of your um, probably general biology for uh, the phospholipid heads, and then you have the tails. And what I want you to notice, look right here. I'm gonna circle it in blue like I did in the last video. This part right here, this is the, that's the hydrophobic part. See the four rings connected? That's the hydrophobic part, and then the tail. See how they're parallel to the phospholipid tails? But you also see this little OH group right there. That's what that is. That's the OH group, okay? And it's hydrogen bonding to these heads right here of the phospholipids because they're polar too. So this is kind of how it fits into the membrane. Remember also that membranes are bilayers, so they have a second layer of phospholipids going um, anti-parallel to the other layer. 
And you can see that cholesterol also fits in, in there too. So you'll find cholesterol in both the inner leaflet and the outer leaflet of the membrane. Okay? So cholesterol can be on both sides, but either way it's going to run parallel to the phospholipid tails such that the OH can hydrogen bond to the phospholipid head and then the van der Waals attractions are between the tails and the cholesterol um, steroid nucleus. Okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, again, this is the structure right here. Hydrogen bonding and van der Waals attractions are the key. All right, so hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.